In the previous video, I briefly talked about the get by class of queries, which return the matching node for a query and throw a descriptive error if no elements match or if more than one match is found. We also had a look at the full list of suffixes, which can be added to the get by method. In this video, let's take a look at our first type of get by query, which is get by role. Get by role queries for elements with the given role. Now, what is a role? Well, role refers to the ARIA role, which provides semantic meaning to content to ensure people using assistive technologies are able to use them. By default, many semantic elements in HTML have a role. For example, button element has a button role, anchor element has a link role, H1 to H6 elements have a heading role, checkboxes have a checkbox role, radio buttons have a radio role, and so on. However, if you're working with elements that do not have a default role, or if you want to specify a different role, the role attribute can be used to add the desired role. For example, to use an anchor element as a button in the navbar, you can add role is equal to button. Irrespective of whether an element has a default role or a role added through the attribute, get by role will query elements based on their roles. If this is not clear enough, let's dive into some examples which will surely help you understand how the query works. Now, a lot of the videos from here on will contain some code that I would have set up behind the scenes. We simply cannot afford the time it takes to write both the component code and the testing code. With that in mind, let me walk you through the code I have set up for this video. In the components folder, I've created another folder called application. Within the folder, I've created a component that contains a very simple form with three inputs and a button. The component name is application and in the JSX, we have a form tag. Within the form tag, we have an input element of type text for the user to enter their name, a select dropdown element for the user to select a job location, a checkbox for the user to accept terms and conditions, and finally, a submit button. I've included this component in app component, and I'm going to delete app.test.tsx, which is not relevant for the rest of the series. If I head to the browser, you should see the UI for the application component. No styles, of course, as that is not the focus in this series. You can grab this code from my GitHub repo and the link is in the description down below. Now that we have a component to test, let's learn how to make use of the get by role query and write a simple test. We begin by creating a new test file in the same application folder application.test.tsx. At the top, let's import the component. Next, we create a describe block to group any test we will be writing. The group name is application, which is the component we are testing. And the second argument is a function. Within the function, we write our tests. So, test. The first argument to test is the test name, which is going to be renders correctly. And the second argument is a function. Within the function, we begin by rendering the component. For that, we import render from testing library. In the function body, we call render passing in application component. Now that a virtual DOM has been created with the application component, 
we can test if the HTML elements are all present. Let's start by checking if the input element is present or not. First, we import screen from testing library. Next, on this screen object, we invoke the get by role method. An input element has a default role of text box, which we pass in as the argument to get by role. We store the result in a constant called name element. Once we have the element, we can write our assertion. Expect the name element to be in the document. If you now save the file and run yarn test, you can see our test passes. Application renders correctly, one passed. Of course, it might also be a false positive. So let me comment out the input element and save the file. Our test fails and that gives me more confidence. Let's continue and make sure the other elements are also present. Our next element is the select dropdown, which has a default role called combo box. So in the test file, const job location element is equal to screen dot get by role combo box. In the next line, expect job location element to be in the document. Save the file and our test continues to pass. Similarly, for the terms and conditions checkbox, const terms element is equal to screen dot get by role checkbox and in the next line expect terms element to be in the document. Save the file and our test is still passing. Finally, let's test if the submit button is present. Const submit button element is equal to screen dot get by role button and in the next line expect submit button element to be in the document. Save the file and our test still has a status of pass. We have been able to find all the elements in the document using get by role query and make our assertions. At this point, you might have one question, which is how do I know the role for each element in my component? To answer that, let me point you to the documentation. If you visit testinglibrary.com, click on docs, navigate to core API, queries, by role, scroll down a bit, and click on a table of HTML elements with their default and desired roles. This will open a new tab with all the HTML elements and their corresponding roles. This is what I use as well. To summarize, get by role queries for elements with the given role. Role can be any default role present on an element or the role added using the role attribute. To get a glimpse of all the HTML elements and their corresponding roles, visit w3.org doc conformance, a link to which is present in the testing library docs. If this is clear, join me in the next video where we will take a look at a few options that get by role method accepts. I'll see you in the next one.